In this video, we're going to review the rules for drawing shear and bending moment diagrams with a couple of examples. And we'll start out with a uh, overhanging beam, so it's supported by a pin at A and a roller at B, and subjected to both a distributed load and uh, a concentrated force uh, out at the free end. So to start out with, and I'm not going to go through this part in detail, but we need to calculate what the reaction forces are, of course, just like we did in statics. And so those come up to be 30 pounds is the upward reaction at the pin at A, and 60 pounds is the reaction at B. So that's always the first step that we have to do to be able to draw the shear and bending moment diagrams. Now, based on this loading, we can now begin to draw the diagram. Now, one thing you have to remember is that whenever we have a concentrated force, such as here, here, and here, whether it's um, an applied load or a reaction force, that's going to result in a step in the same direction and the same magnitude in the shear diagram. So we start here at zero, always at the beginning, and we take a 30 pound jump upwards. Okay, now what do we have after that? And that's where we get into the um, range of the distributed load. Distributed load has a downward uh, magnitude of 10 pounds per inch. Well, that's going to be the slope of the shear diagram. So the shear diagram is going to have a slope downward of 10 pounds per foot over this distance of 6 feet. And of course what that means is if I start at 30 and I go down at 10 pounds per foot for 6 feet I'm going to end up at negative 30 as my shear uh, value uh, at 6 feet. Okay. Another way of looking at it is what's the area under the distributed load curve, and it's 10 down uh, times, or well, negative 10 times 6 feet, so a total of minus 60 pounds, and that's the change in the shear from x equals 0 to x equals 6. Okay, now we also are going to need to know where does this cross the axis, and that's easy enough to figure. Again, if we start at 30 and we're going down at 10 pounds per foot, then after three feet, we're going to be at zero, which of course leaves us three feet here as well. Now, to move on from six feet over to B, there's nothing going on. Anytime there's no distributed load, it means that the slope of the shear diagram is going to be zero. So we just uh, come flat across for those two feet. Now we're at another concentrated force, and this time the reaction force, 60 pounds up, and so we take a 60 pound upward step. We were at minus 30, and of course that brings us back to positive 30. Okay, between B and the end, again, no distributed load, therefore the slope is equal to zero, so we come straight across for the two feet remaining of the beam. And finally, we have a 30 pound downward force that's gonna result in a step downward of 30, and so we end up back at zero. So that's always a good check if we should start at zero and end at zero for both our shear and moment diagrams. Now because there are no couples, no uh, external moments in this problem, everything we need to draw the moment diagram is contained within the shear diagram. So once again we'll start at zero and now we're going to come upwards and the amount that we're going to come upwards is the area under the shear diagram. So the positive area that we have is going to be 45 foot-pounds, again just the area of that triangular region there, and so we're going to start at zero and end up at 45. Now the shape of this curve, again you can tell from the shear diagram, remember that the value of the shear is equal to the slope of the moment. So where we cross zero, of course the value uh, of shear is zero, therefore the slope of the moment is zero. So we start out at a positive slope, the slope gets gentler as we go, and we end up at this point with the slope equal to zero. Okay, from this point over to that point, we look at the area under the curve. Again, it's negative area since it's below the origin here. And again, it's uh, symmetric to the, <coughs> excuse me, to the first triangle. So the area here is minus 45 foot-pounds. We're starting at 45. We're going to go down to zero. And again, we start at a slope of zero in this case. And the slope gets negative and gets greater as we go. All right. 
from this point over, we now have an area of minus 60 foot-pounds, which again we add to the starting point at zero in this case, and we end up down at minus 60. And finally, we have an area here that's positive 60, which it needs to be if we're going to come back to zero. So you notice in both of these cases, we have straight lines. We're linear wherever the slope is a constant like this, and we go to a second order curve where the slope of the shear diagram is linear as it is here. So there's our result. The moment that we'd be most interested in would be this minus 60, the maximum uh, magnitude of the moment. Now let's look at one other example, and the difference here is that we do have uh, both an applied moment or a couple at uh, x equals 5 feet, and because this is a cantilever beam, we're going to have a reaction moment at A as well. So again, uh, skip it over this step, but you can calculate the reaction forces. Obviously, it's 60 pounds upwards at A, and there needs to be a moment. In this case, it has to be counterclockwise of 600 foot-pounds to maintain equilibrium. So we start out by drawing the shear diagram, and uh, when we draw the shear diagram, we can ignore the moments for the time being. So all we have is a step up here of 60, a step down of 30, and a step down of 30. So again, starting at zero, step up to 60, no distributed loads. So we come straight across with a slope of zero, a step downwards of 30. Once again, no distributed load, come straight to the end, and a step down at 30 gets us back to shear equals zero at the end. So that looks, uh, looks fine. We started at zero, and we end at zero. Now, before we look at the moments, it's a good idea to review the sign convention here. Now, when we cut a beam in two and look at the internal, the stress resultants here, a positive bending moment is one like this, one that creates compression at the top of the beam and tension at the bottom. But now, let's also consider what happens when we add a couple or an external moment. So at the end of the beam, we'll say, uh, here's an applied moment, again, either a, an applied or reaction moment, but an external moment. So when we make a cut within the beam close to there, and we look at what's required for equilibrium, we see that the moment that is required for equilibrium here is a positive bending moment. So our sign convention works like this. If we have a clockwise moment, that will create a positive step in the moment diagram. A counterclockwise moment is a negative step in the moment diagram. So you have to be careful uh, about that. But do remember, if you, if you uh, do it the wrong way, then your moment diagram probably won't end up at zero, so you'll know you've done something wrong. So this time, again, we can't go strictly from the shear diagram to get to the moment diagram because of the presence of those two external couples. And so, as usual, we start at zero, but right away we take a step due to this 600 uh, foot-pound moment right here. And this is a counterclockwise moment, <coughs> which when we're summing the moments we would usually consider to be positive. But remember, this results in a negative step in the moment diagram. So we start out at zero and we end up down here at minus 600 foot-pounds right away. Now between A and the center of the beam, we look at this area under the shear diagram. In this case it's 300 foot-pounds. We simply add that to our negative 600, so we'll end up here at minus 300 because of the fact that this is a flat line. In other words, the slope is positive, positive 60 the entire way, then we're going to have a, a straight line from our minus 600 up to minus 300. Okay, now we have another step here because we have another, in this case, an applied couple of 150 foot-pounds. This one's clockwise, so it's going to result in a positive step of 150. So we started at minus 300. That takes us to minus 150. And finally, from here on out to the end, we look at the area under the shear diagram, and it's 150 foot-pounds. So when we add to minus 150, we do end up at zero, as we would expect. So that's, uh, that's really it. And after a little bit of practice, these become very easy to draw. Uh, they're logical. Again, they, they're kind of self-checking because you, you always start at zero and end at zero, then you've probably done it correctly.